Welcome back, everybody, to yet another episode here on the O'Shea Duke Jackson main channel. It is very, very good to have all of you here and joining me at this particular time. Now, I am sorry for being late. You know I do be on that nigga shit, but um, better late than never. For those of you who are in the live stream, I want to welcome you. Go ahead and like the video. For those of you who are going to be watching the restream that can't make it live with us, I definitely understand, but we're glad to also have you here. Uh, today, we have a very, very, very great guest and a very interesting topic. Uh, I was uh, stalking her Facebook page uh, as usual. She creates some very, very interesting content and memes on her page. And uh, I saw a particular meme that we'll be talking about a little bit later. But today's topic of the show is black men feel weird when they get love from black women. And I want to introduce to some and to others, Nicole from the Inner Beauty uh, Movement channel and YouTube channel fame. How are you doing today, Nicole? I'm awesome. It's a beautiful day in Wakanda. I, I How are see. You doing? <laughs> this is looking very nice. A very, uh, very, 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 very nice background. And thank you for for coming on, Nicole Michelle. The, for, for those people who may not know you, obviously you were on the Sunday Rumble, and I want to thank you for coming on. It was a very, very successful show and platform that we ran on Saturday, Sunday rather. Uh, briefly tell people what your YouTube channel is about and what your Facebook is about. Yes, I'm Nicole Michelle, founder and femininity influencer for the Inner Beauty Movement. And um, I wrote a book some years ago that is still available on Amazon called The Inner Beauty Movement Presents From Hello to I Do, uh, which is basically helping young women navigate the difficult world of dating, courting, and to marriage. And then from that book, it grew into a movement. My popularity on Facebook grew. Typically because my posts are engaging and I kind of hit people in the gut with the one or two sentences and get people talking about masculine and feminine energy. And from that, the mo movement has grown into a YouTube channel called The Inner Beauty TV where I drop different types of tips on femininity to kind of get people familiar with my movement. And also, you can find me um, on uh, Facebook under Nicole Michelle, my business page, where I, I have different deals on my courses now that are available, femininity, etiquette, wine courses, um, marriage prep, all of that's available for the young ladies. So there are no more excuses. So thank you so much for having me again. All right. And I'm definitely uh, excited to have you on the channel. You always do a, a very, very great job in your presentation. Uh, let me draw uh, the attention if we can, to one of your most recent posts on Facebook, I will congratulate you for uh, <laughs> some interesting memes and, and things that they get shared quite often. Uh, for example, I will read this one. Boss's wife saw hubby kids off headed to the gym to stay in shape, maintains home. Many sisters headed to job to make the boss rich. All right. But. Uh, that's the one that struck my eye. Okay. Uh, hey, this one, mouthy and uncooperative females don't get spoiled by masculine men. That got 50 shares. But this is the one that I want to talk about today. And it's this one. A lot of black men don't even feel comfortable getting respect from sisters. They rarely experienced it. Hmm. I'll read it again. A lot of black men don't even feel comfortable getting respect from sisters. They rarely experience it. Please talk, talk to us about what was your inspiration behind this particular post? Sure. Um, what um, really made me do that post was I was real excited because yesterday was the 50th anniversary of Tommy Smith and um, John Carlos is black fist in 1968 Mexico City Olympics. And so I was really excited about that post and I really wanted to kind of um, encourage the brothers that are out here dealing with white supremacy and everything that's going on in the media and society. I wanted to take that as an opportunity to push them and let them know that, you know, the cowards we forget, but the brave men we always remember. And um, Colin Kaepernick isn't the first ath black athlete or black men that we consider black to um, do this. And I wanted to let the younger generation know that this happened 50 years ago. So this isn't the first time black men have stood up to the uh, uh, dominant society in the sports world. Well, somebody made a post and uh, it really saddened me 
but at the same time, it kind of like made me want to do this post. And he said, um, he brought up the white gentleman that was the silver medalist on the block and started saying how he was from Australia and how he was a part of the, you know, uh, he took a lot of kickback for supporting Tommy and John. And while this is all true, and all of us history buffs and sports fanatics already know this, it took the steam away from the message I was trying to convey to the black men that, and to our younger generation, that to stay, take a stand. Because what we see a lot is a lot of us buckling under pressure. And I didn't want it to go on that type of tangent where we take the steam that is originally meant for the brothers and start talking about something else. So that's what made me make that post. Like, brothers, when someone's respecting you <laughs> and obviously giving you that shine, take the shine, okay? Take it. Don't fight it. So that's what made me do that. Can't hear you. I can't hear you. I, I muted myself. Um, this whole respect piece, right? And, and, and I, I mean, when we look at a lot of black men don't even feel comfortable getting respect from sisters. They've rarely experienced it. Some people may say, well, to get respect, you need to, you know, they're not worth being respected. Well, let's deal with why they're not getting respect. They're not doing enough to get respect. If you were to hear somebody to, to come at you with this particular talking point, what would be your response? Well, when a woman says that, I automatically know that she's unaccustomed to masculine um, protection and provision. And she's probably attracted the dusties and the busties of the male gender. Uh, she has not been around consistently good men for her to say that feminine women generally don't say well where are the good men around because we naturally attract them whether we're single or married we attract masculine men easily and one thing that feminine women know is that a masculine man does not feel loved until he's respected men masculine men equate love with respect Women equate love with how much he does for me in terms of can he provide for me? Uh, how does he treat me? Does he make me number one? Does he adore me? Does he make me priority? That's how we feel love. But men, on the other hand, a lot of women forget men are different. And when they embrace, when they embrace this one particular uh, point, they will be more successful with men automatically overnight. Men equate love with respect. You cannot say you love a man and you do not respect him. Hmm. Uh, that's very interesting. Let's, let's kind of deal with this particular uh, statement. And I, I think all the people that are super chatting right now, I will get to you in a minute. Feminine women. Okay. Cause there is this question. We see it all the time. You live in a, a black a successful area uh, in Atlanta and there's many outlets, essence, ebony, where are the good men at? You make the case that feminine women have no problem attracting men. This is correct. All ages, all sizes, all shades. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did you say all shades? All shades. Okay, let, let, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play devil's advocate, right? Because you know, we just, we just uh, ended this panel that you were part of colorism. Um, you're saying that. For those black women that have the argument, black men don't like me because I'm too dark or black men don't like me because I'm too big. You're saying that's not the case. Yeah. Are there some guys that are color struck or I hate that word uh, that have a preference for lighter women? Absolutely. Because black women come in all shades. So quite naturally, logically, there will be some men who kind of defer to different types of women. That's, um, that is our story. That is the narrative for African-Americans in America and now globally. Uh, so to sit here and say that there are some men that don't defer to lighter women or women that are more shapely, they have a bigger butt, that have, 
that's disingenuous. So I'm not going to sit here and say that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who rely on that one particular argument as to why they're unsuccessful with men, I cry bull because femininity evens the playing field, regardless of your pedigree, your race, your background, your shade. Look at Michelle Obama. She's not light skinned. Look at Rashawn Ali, who is an Atlanta personality, gorgeous chocolate sister, and brothers share her p picture all over Instagram. Um, what about Taylor Brooks? If you follow ESPN, the young lady that does the interviews on ESPN, every time I mention her, brothers just go insane, and she's not light-skinned. So let's quit with it. A lot of sisters are stuck in hurt. They're stuck in the past. And, you know, that's why I created a healing group to address all of those issues, because in order to embrace their femininity, they have got to get past the hurt. There's no way you can nurture a man to great to his greatness in your femininity if you're hurt, because all you're going to do is hurt. Hurt people hurt people. And so that's what we have is infected people infecting other people and they just passing it on. Nobody's stopping to say, hey, let me take a break from relationships and let me see about me. Everybody's just jumping from bed to bed, man to man, woman to woman, and not saying, you know what, let me take some time for me. Let me be selfish for a minute and see about me. Those are the healthiest people. I love it when a man says, you know what, I don't need a wife right now. Actually, I just need to do me. I respect that because what he's saying is I got to get myself together before I can get back in the game. And I wish more women would do that. So that should be a red flag to your listeners, O'Shea, when they hear a woman say, well, what are the men doing? They don't deserve respect because statistics show otherwise. Let me let me just do this real quick because you make uh, bring up some some great points. Uh, I'm going to shout out the super chats here. For those of you who are watching, do me a favor. Uh, get the likes up on the video. If you could like the video, that'd be very, very good. Also, Nicole Inner Beauty has her channel on YouTube. She's more popular than dealing on Facebook. She's moving over to the YouTube platform. What you can do, guys, for those of you that are watching live, go into the description. You can subscribe to her channel. There's a link there. Hit the bell. I would love to get her a few hundred subscribers. For those of you watching the restream, Go into the description. You can subscribe to her. Nicole interviewed below. Subscribe. Hit the bell. Let me just uh, take a, uh, some time to uh, shout out some super chats, and we'll get back into the interview and ask some uh, pretty pretty good questions. Sure, I think Nicole is giving me a lot I can work with, <laughs> as she usually does. And and guys, again, thank you so much for you know your support on on today for uh, for the channel. God damn it! What the hell? Okay, so here we go. Here, uh, Brian. Uh, no, uh, we have uh, a nail. Props to O'Shea and Nicole. Be feminine, ladies. G Star, five Australian daughters. Uh, G Star goes morning, Auntie. Doctor JC, thank you so much. Black women love what we bring, provide, but not us. Doctor JC, I think it's my brother out in the that's, that's driving the trucks. Bro, email me so I can get you back onto the show, brother. Jamarius Willis, he emailed me. I love this. We need discussions like this. Thank you, brother Jamarius. We've been talking to you too. Dr. J, man, hit me up, bro, so we can we can basically collab again, man, on, on another trucking show. Um, let me let me kind of deal with this. You said that femininity uh evens uh the playing field. Uh there are gonna be a lot of people out there that are gonna disagree with you, especially women. Why do you believe that femininity is the great equalizer? Well, because women are naturally born feminine. I know there are a lot of people that say gender fluidity, uh, role fluidity, and everybody's just doing whatever. But I believe that that has contributed to the down uh, sizing of the amount of relationships that are actually uh, fruitful, that are successful, because people are so all over the place. We live in a place where most people are narcissistic, where they are masculine and they are feminine because society tells men to get in touch with their feminine side. And it's okay to cry, which it, which it is, but he leans more towards his feminine the more he does that. We don't celebrate masculinity. That it's okay for him to be masculine, especially black men, but we'll come back to that. And women, we're told, get out there, get in the workforce and compete, postpone marriage to go to college and get a degree so that you can get out there and compete. That's what sisters are told. Unfortunately, we stay in the workforce way too long and have to double back 
uh, and then we find out the playing field is a little bit different, but I digress. So we're told to operate in all these energies instead of accepting who we are. We have brothers who are afraid to stand up and say I'm masculine. We live in a society that celebrates uh, black male homosexuality. I'm just going to be honest. They just do. They don't celebrate. They ridicule. They call names. They attack black masculinity and i'm really standing up for black masculinity because without black masculine men hello uh aside from the good sex that they're known for we need their protection we need their provisions we only sexualize them compartmentalize black men as these drug dealers and these thugs in suits and they are here to provide for us or and give us good sex but they are human beings and let's celebrate them in their position because you know what if we push masculine away masculine men away for everybody that's listening and wants to really jump down my throat think about this if we push the good masculine men away because they do exist who do we have to support us and and i don't mean support as in financial i mean support as in physically provide physically protect us because so many so many times these chats and these YouTube conversations turn into money. What about protection in these streets? Because I don't want a brother to see me getting the brakes beat off of me by white supremacists. And then they just, well, they ain't my mama. They ain't my sister. I want him to look and be like, you know what? That's a sister. And I'm not going to sit here and walk past and let this white supremacist beat her down like a dog. But you know what? We've pushed black men to that point where they're like, I ain't getting involved. I don't trust women. You know, I've had the cops called on me for nothing. You know, uh, all she going to do is turn around and turn on me. Uh, they really don't have trust for the uh, black woman. So getting back to your original question, how does it even the playing field? Well, uh, a woman can walk in a room and she can be an average looking woman by men's term you know you guys grade from a scale of one to ten she can walk into a room let's say she's uh oh pick a mediocre celebrity that you think is mediocre <sighs> well i'm so thirsty but um okay let's say <laughs> okay i'll just give for example uh monica the singer it used to be monica okay. okay you think she's mediocre okay All no right. no no but i was just probably now because she's older but you know, I'm thirsty, so shit, I, you know me. <laughs> Listen, Too many, okay. I wouldn't, you know, I'm just letting you know. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so she walks into a room full of Halle Berry's, Beyonce's, uh, you know, J-Lo's, uh, you know, the top-notch women that men just automatically swoon over. Whatever your 10 is in your mind, okay? She walks into a room, if she's masculine energy, which the majority of American women are, let's just keep that 150%. Most women are masculine and alpha, masculine energy women. She walks into a room just like them. She doesn't stand out. She it, She's a singer, so what? Compared to everybody else, she's just like everybody else. She's a cookie cutter. But what changes it about her to masculine men now, not only is she ups her, she ups the ante, she ups her attraction level when she's feminine because she sticks out. Because thanks to our feminist society, we have more masculine energy women. She stands out like a sore thumb because she's feminine. So it's not like the other, the old days when it's reversed, where most women were feminine and then the masculine energy women stuck out. They were the, the, uh, the hoes that stayed across town, across the tracks, and you knew, men knew where to go find those women. Well, now they're everywhere. So not saying that masculine energy women are hoes, but generally, they, you know, those women were sectionalized. They were put off from society. Most women were feminine, submissive, at home with their man. That's just what it was. Let's just keep it real. Nowadays, they're everywhere. They're cookie cut. All women look alike. All of them have a ton of weave. All of them have big butts. All of them want to be on Instagram. Who's different? So when you step into a room full of women who are all the same and you come in there with your natural hair, you're feminine, you're smiling, you're being cordial to the men, regardless of whether you want to get picked up or it's not about getting a phone number, attention, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not about any of that. 
but you're you are receptive and open to masculine energy and masculine um cooperation they can feel your cooperation you generally like men you even the playing field so where you would have just been mediocre just based on your looks compared to other women add femininity and confidence to that and now you've upped the ante because now you stand out for more than just looks does that make sense if a woman just relies on her looks alone she's gonna blend in this is why so many women are doing extra this is why they're spending hundreds of dollars on weave. This is why they're online arguing about men not being chosen, about men dating outside their race, about um, uh, the weight requirements of men. Uh, this is why they're complaining and they're doing the most. This is why a lot of women I see in Atlanta, it could just be Atlanta, but the gyms are full of women, masculine energy women, working out <laughs> because they're trying to compete on a superficial level. Why do you think so many women defer to their degrees and their education? Because they're trying to compete with their uh, on an intellectual level. Well, I don't compete with none of that. I'm feminine. And that makes me stand out in my age group, right? So, and that's another thing. Women are complaining about men like younger women. And I don't, I don't have that issue because, number one, I don't compete with younger women. I don't have to. And number two, for my age group, um, I want to stick out because of my femininity and my confidence, which is what I teach the women in my movement. All ages, I started out focus, hyper-focusing on the ages between 18 and 30. But what I'm finding is a lot of older women are saying it, uh, the, that light bulb is coming out. And they're saying, oh, I need to double back and learn how to be more feminine to attract masculine energy. And they're, they're joining my uh, movement and taking my courses because they're seeing how their life is changing overnight just by implementing the things that I've um, taught in my courses. Okay, so let me let me uh, do this. And guys, I'm going to get back to uh, some of the super chats. I thank you guys. Continue to like the video if you're just coming into the live chat. We have 401 people. Really appreciate you. Uh, let me just kind of transition in, in, into this because you brought up some good points, but let me kind of retract if we can. Um, your initial statement on, on Facebook uh, deals with this whole idea that black men, they, they don't know how to take it. Right. And what I figured out is if you have a, a group of people who come up in, I don't know, unique environments. They tend not to be able to appreciate, appreciate the opposite thing. For example, I've had a, a friend, and he tells me, right, if he has a girl, a woman that's nice, you know, very calm in her demeanor, man, she's cool and everything, man, but I need a chick that's feisty. I need a chick that's, you know what I mean? I need a chick that's, uh, 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 like, sassy. That I need, a, like, I need a, I need a, do you understand what I'm saying? They'll... They'll come there. I think a lot of black men actually will kind of pass up sometimes, not a lot, but I know there's definitely some black men that come across good black women that might be nice, feminine, but they are still dealing with like when they come across these women that can respect them, they may have a hard time dealing with it. Do you think have you heard uh, of this sort of scenario that goes on in the black community with, with, with dating? From at least women, like I was, I had boyfriends. I tried to be like this with him, and he he ended up leaving me for a ghetto hood rat or something like that. Oh yes, that seems to be the theme of my life. Um, <laughs> sometimes I do get in my feelings. Sometimes okay. where I meet a wonderful gentleman, and um, and I see what he's with now, and I'm just like, uh, and I have to tell women stay the course because he wasn't for you. Nine times out of ten, they're beta males. Uh, who are not used to masculine energy. I'm sorry, they're not used to feminine women um, and they're battling their own masculine uh, energy in terms of they're not homosexual, but they are so not used to it that they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're like, wait a minute, this is too good to be true. Did she just call me sir? Did she just ask me, can she serve me? Did she just, is she really at home on a Friday night? Uh huh. She's sneaking out. She ain't gonna be home. Yeah, I'm gonna call her at three just to make sure. And I'm a, they're just waiting for something. And I'm like, I'm the real deal. 
Like, I'm not backup. I'm the real deal. So I've let a few people go. And some people have walked out of my life. Like, and I'm just like, I'm calling my cousin. And I'm like, what did I do? And he's like, girl, stop. He wasn't good enough for you. And I'm like, oh. And I know, and I know the pain. And I know brothers are going through it, too, when they, they're like, I'm a good brother. And she dissed me for Pookie and Ray Ray. I get it. But this is encouragement to all of those ladies out there who are studying femininity. It's not femininity that's the problem. It's not you. And fellas, if you're masculine and she doesn't respect you, it's not you. Stay the course. What's going to happen with a lot of quality people is it's hard for us to find each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, ratchets and dusties, they run TV. They run social media. Everywhere we go, we see dusty behavior. So it's going to be very, very hard for us to find each other and connect because by the time we find each other and connect, we like tired. We like, oh, there we go. You know, and we're worn out and we give them the business. We really don't subconsciously, we're not trying to, but it's, it's that fear that, oh my God, I'm waiting. He too good to be true, girl. I know he got, I know he cheating. Uh, uh There's no way he's, you know, the real deal. There's no way she's the real deal. Oh, she just go to church and work. Mm -hmm, she lying. She lying. She cheating. Mm -mm. And, and it's so easy to do that. That's the cop out. <laughs> and, and a lot of time it comes to fear because it's happened before. Or you see mama run out this boyfriend this week. The next next week mama had another boyfriend. You've seen the turnstile in mama's bedroom. Let's just keep it 100. So if mama, if you, if you saw mama being disloyal, it's really hard for you to believe that any woman out here is going to be loyal to you. So a lot of brothers are dealing with that. So I tell sisters to stay the course. Don't let his pain become your pain. Stay feminine, stay blessed because your blessing, your quality man is coming. They are out there. They're all over my page, regardless of what the trolls may say. Trust me, I know who's following me. And these are not some dusty, busty men. Okay, these men have put money behind their support for me because they believe that strongly in my message. Dusty and Busties don't come out of their pocket for any woman for any reason, uh, arbitrarily for no reason. Okay, the men on my page, a lot of them have been married more than 10 years. A lot of them are lurking on my page. They may not say anything, but they send me messages. They are commenting they are donating to my patreon because they believe in my message don't believe the hype there are quality masculine men everywhere and depending on your age bracket it may just be a little bit more depending on your age bracket but that's what it is that's natural that's gonna happen <laughs> but as a feminine woman you you um you raise the stakes a little bit higher and you don't have to compete a man that doesn't uh, appreciate your femininity is not the man for you because what's going to happen is he's going to put you in your masculine energy and you guys are going to be bucket. Now back to the men that like a feisty woman. You know mm -hmm. what brothers for those of you who like those that, that she got a little edge on her she hard and she, she getting up. Okay. Check <laughs> back in with me in about five years. <laughs> she slept with your boy uh, aborted a baby uh, she's fought with you, called the police on you, stabbed you, uh, cheated on you, uh, cussed you out in public, got a tattoo or more tattoos. You call me back when that happens because it will. Those women, uh, if you, a lot of those brothers, either mama was like that, the women in their family were like that, they were raised in a very difficult uh, environment. They weren't raised around a lot of women who just wore skirts and, and and shoes and didn't curse and uh, didn't sleep around and they actually had happy marriages. A lot of brothers didn't grow up in the Cosby atmosphere. Uh, they just, that's foreign to them to actually see a woman like Felicia Rashad. That is absolutely foreign to them. And I get it. So that's in this movement, that's what I'm trying to create is like a, 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 a uh, a Ford, what's that? The uh, the General Motors assembly line of women coming out looking like uh, Felicia Rashad with femininity, where they go, whoa, what's this movement? Because the brothers on my page and they look, and that's why I highlight the feminine elite women who have invested, and I featured them, and the brothers are like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, we exist, <laughs> we exist. 
Uh, but a brother that is constantly attracted to those type of women, he needs healing. And unfortunately, you don't, it's not all his fault. He doesn't see a lot of that in the media. We love to push the ratchet. We love to, we love that. And O'Shea, if I could get a little bit gutter here, word on the street is that those type of women have the best sex. <laughs> Am I lying? Do you do you brothers say that? I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> okay. So when you have that going on, brothers are like, yo, when it's Friday night and I'm in that mood, that's a ratchet that they end up kicking it with her. Cause she has a great personality. She's a great person. She's just rough around the edges. She's a little ratchet. And what happens is she ends up with a relationship, ends up getting her pregnant. So now this is your baby mama. This is your story. So now you stuck with that. You stuck with that issue. You stuck with that problem. And that's what's happening. Same thing with sisters. They're doing the same thing <laughs> on the other side. So what I'm telling my sisters in my marriage prep is uh, I'm taking a, a, um, a, a, a real approach to marriage. And a lot of things I didn't learn until after I was married, after the fact. And I'm in my marriage prep, I'm teaching women uh, a few tips that work for me that uh, can sexually satisfy your husband to keep him like not driving around the neighborhood talking about, oh, I got to go home. Oh, my God. No, he's not on the porn sites at two in the morning because he's not satisfied. Um, I'm giving them some tips that is going to keep him in the house. If you feel me. And this whole perception that good girls are boring is a total lie. There are women that are very feminine that are very, uh, free in the bedroom with the man that, <laughs> with a man that has committed to her, which is what I teach the ladies in my movement, in order for him to trust you and open his heart to him, you must have virtue. So that means tell him no and be a be okay with him walking out the door. All right, see you, brother. You're not good enough for me. Hmm. And the brother that really wants you, is gonna he's going to stay and, and see this through. And then when you get him, after he commits to you and does what he needs to do, preferably behind, you know, after marriage, but I know they're not going to do that. Um, <laughs> uh, after commitment, then blow mm -hmm. his mind. Blow his mind. He's like, wait a minute. This good girl just did what? That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, guys, I'm going to shout out some of the super chats here in just a, just a second. Um... 456 people watching. I thank all of you. Again, do me a favor for those of you who like the content. I see a lot of people on the live are enjoying it today. You can go into the description and moderators, if you can take the link out, you can subscribe to Nicole's Inner Beauty uh, channel uh, there. And um, and then also do me a favor, right? Uh, if we can, I like to get a lot of people to like the video. All right. We don't have enough people liking the video. It's free. Jesus paid it off on the cross. So if I'm the man, thank you, brother. Yeah, I need to see you niggas liking the goddamn video. Okay, y'all know how we do over here. Stop being stingy with the motherfucking likes. Okay, get this shit up. So let me let me do this real quick. You you know that the uh the African American um situation, which is most um African Americans are being born out of wedlock. And I want to give a, a a shout out to George Macon. He's in the chat. We were talking about this. The other week, he makes a very strong point. A lot of women raise their sons. They baby their sons. They um, are not allowing their sons to fall and get up on their own. And these women are being raised without a father. So they're not used to having a man in the house. And when you get this, this young man or man that's been heavily dependent on a female figure, kind of baby him. And then you get this woman who was never raised around a man and doesn't know what a man's role is. It's a, it's a, it's a disaster waiting to happen. So my question is to you, how can you teach a woman to appreciate, uh, uh you know, male authority or male guidance when she never had a man in her life? Well, in my course, I specifically have an entire chapter dedicated to understanding masculinity. I break down what it means. Mm -hmm. I break down the bad and the good. 
And so they understand it because typically when people fear masculinity and fight it is because they don't understand it. I understand masculinity. I love it. And like I said on my live the other day on Facebook, I can't stand being around a whole lot of women for a long time. It irritates me. I'm just like, where are the men? Where's the testosterone? Cause it's like all that cackling and Oh my God. Oh, where's the men for too long. Uh, simply because I like that balance. I love men. I love the way they talk. And I love the way they laugh. I, I just love that. When you're a feminine woman, you start to believe, you start to feel that same way. You love being around masculine men. Being around beta men are like, it's like a, nails on a chalkboard to you. It's like, oh my God. Oh, I can control this man. Oh, this is boring. So, and, and what do women do? A lot of women cheat on beta males with masculine energy men, with alpha masculine energy men, because they're bored. She's conquered him. She's run over him. He's proven that he'll do whatever uh, he can to keep her because she's pretty, sexy, you know, sex is good, whatever, into whatever you want in that blank. And he's proven that he's not going to go anywhere. He's going to do whatever she wants. She's his simp. Um, and, uh, she's bored now because now she at a woman's core, she's feminine. So she wants that masculine male leadership. So she's going to cheat with the masculine man. Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington, uh, comes to mind, uh, a lot, even Richard Lawson, which is Tina's husband, his old TV shows, he epitomized masculinity. So when a man like that walks into a room, all the women are like, ooh. And her beta male sitting right there, and she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is why men should strive to be masculine because you get all the women by natural. You don't have to have a whole lot of money. She needs that energy. It's the energy. It's the energy. You don't have to have a whole lot of money. Masculine, you are you are steadfast, you're logical, you're analytical, you're a problem solver. You don't come with, well, baby, what you want to do? You have the answer. Listen, I, I, let me think about this and I'll get back to you. Or, and then, or you get on the phone with your boy. Hey, hey, what you, what you do about this tired and such, 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 such. Then you go back to your woman. Hey, this is what we're going to do. X, Y, and Z. A woman loses respect for a man when she's like, baby, because we're going to test you. Baby. Uh, this X, Y, and Z happened. What should I do? What do you think? And he goes, uh, well, I don't know. What you think? Wonk, 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 wonk. He's already lost. Done. She's like, okay. She puts him in the simp file of men I can use. And if he's very generous with his money and time and just all into her and confesses his love, she's like, okay, this is easy. So she locks it down. She takes the benefits. And when that brother, that real brother comes in, it could be his homie. It could be the pastor. We see a lot of that. Hallelujah. It could be, <laughs> it could be the garbage man. It could be Pookie. It doesn't matter. It's that masculine energy. And those type of women will cheat completely because it's that energy. She's sexually energized and she's polarized with that masculine energy. I tell brothers, why why do you want to be proud to be a beta? You're the man that she's kind of like, you're the, like the step. Of, she settled for you. She settled for you. Because if she could get a masculine man, she would. Most sisters, a lot of sisters, I'm going to say most, a great number of sisters really are afraid of masculinity. So they run from it. They dog it. They talk about, oh, these black men, these men aren't masculine. No, they masculine. They just don't want you. Uh, they're everywhere. I seem to find masculine men everywhere. And I'm in my early 40s, so mm -hmm. I don't, you know, if you're in your 20s and or your 30s come and you half decent complaining about you can't find masculine black men, I question you off the rip because I have no problems. Even in Atlanta, where we know what the situation is down here, I still have no problem attracting masculine energy. <laughs> so I don't know what... The, I do know what to tell you. You need to take my course so you can find those brothers. Well, the brothers will find you if you're feminine. But uh, brothers who, who struggle with the masculine stuff, I can tell you a few brothers they can go to to kind of get some information. But generally, 
uh, the, so you will continue to be a doormat because you are wavering in your steadfastness. Feminine women can only be submissive to masculine energy. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. Feminine women can only be submissive to masculine energy. We will buck the system. We will dump you. We will cheat on you, take your money. All of those things are what women do when they are uh, with beta males. So this is feminine women. We're, we're just not even going to entertain that. We're not going to get in a relationship with those men. And I tell women, stop categorizing all men as no good. That's the first step in healing. That's the first part of why you don't have a man, because you think all of them are bad. Get out of that. Understand what masculinity is so you can, when you see a brother in a suit and tie or a brother that is, um, you know, he's talking articulate, he's speaking articulate intelligently, you don't get all nervous and shook and backtracking and making excuses of why he wouldn't want you. You're like, hello, how are you? And in your mind, you're like, finally. Ooh, all the beta males I had to go through. Finally, a masculine man, you're kind of breathing a sigh of relief because, whew. And even if it doesn't work out, you know there's hope. Hope that made sense. <laughs> Um, let me let me do this real quick, guys. Thanks so much. I'm gonna go into the shout out to some of the super chats. 501 people watching, and I, I typically don't do a lot of live streams on main channel, so I'm glad to get that here, guys. Uh, continue to like the video. I'm gonna read off to some of the super chats. And I appreciate you, Negroes, for donating. You guys know, um, it's, it's, if, if you can support the channel, it's always good. Thank you for the brothers that are actually supporting the channel on super chat. You can you can support it as low as 99 cents. I know you niggas got it. The dollar ain't nothing. Okay. Y'all just spent that at Popeye's getting the biscuit last night. All right. So thank you to all the brothers. And some of these brothers have donated it more than once. So I thank you too for your support on the channel. Uh let me just go through a few of the people uh that have donated during the live stream. Uh, and I want to talk about Brother Wymac. Thank you. What does submission mean to a feminine woman? We will talk about that. Good question. Hassani Ali. My brother from the Negro Manager.com. Good stuff. O'Shea, love her work. Thank you. Jamarius Willis again. Betas act like they're experts on keeping the female. Uh, Jamarius uh, Willis again. This discussion is right on time. A colored female tried to destroy my interracial relationship. It was hard for her to believe a black masculine could have a happy relationship. Let's talk about that real quick, right? Yes. This is, this is, this is, <laughs> you said a colored female. I'm oh, right, I was talking about that. Wait, wait, he went back Jim Crow. Colored? Colored? Okay. Okay, so this is what I want to ask you. You know how you talked about a black man wearing a suit, a black man wearing a tie, a black man speaking very well. It's my ideology that black women are not used to black men being in that kind of image. But they're used to white men being like that. Like, for example, um, when I see white men with black women that are, you know, and a lot of times when I see a white man with a black woman, that she's very attractive. The white guy, if he was dressed, like if a black guy dressed like that, he would not have a black woman that looked that good. That looked that good right? And it's also my impersonation or interpretation that a black man, if he sees a, 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 a feminine black woman, it's like, okay, it's I don't expect it's that from you. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 okay, but when black men go with non-black women, it's okay for them to be feminine. Do you think that black men are starting to believe that femininity only exists outside of African American women? And this is one of the reasons why we might be seeing so many black men going that way. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. And I wish Kevin Samuels were here because he'll tell you he goes through H-E-L-L -L trying to get brothers to embrace the idea of owning some suits. Um, uh, I've had a couple of people that I knew that it was like, every time I saw you, you always have on jeans. Like, can is there a time where we can dress up and go somewhere and... Um, where I don't see you in just jeans and sneakers. Like, I know Jordans cost $200 plus or whatever they cost now. But, can is there a time where I recently um, went out with someone from the past and 
it was just like nothing changed still jeans and sneakers and i had on heels and a dress and i felt overdressed and he literally said you're overdressed and i was like this is casual this is ca you haven't seen my dressed up <laughs> my dressed up is another level you haven't seen that but he thought just some tights some heels and a skirt was too dressy and i that's what in my mind i was like all right gotta let this one go because it, it is like <laughs> at what point can can it, when women want to be feminine she's got to have a counterpart this is okay are we dressing up tonight yes then he can he's not afraid to break out some nice some decent gear a lot of times a lot of sisters that's all they see is brothers in khakis and jeans and so when this is your visual, then you turn on the TV, which is nothing but negativity. Then you turn on social media, which, my God, is nothing but neg negativity. There are pictures of famous people, but that doesn't pertain to you. That's the image you, you, uh, you that imprint embeds in your mind. That's what you see. That's it. Same thing with brothers. If all they see is Keisha pushing three kids down the street, tattoos piercings yo yo mom yo doing all this all the time if that's all they see and then they come around amy and it's well hello tyrone how are you and it's just this whole feminine energy just this whole uh different place she puts him in see ladies femininity makes a man feel good all right outside the bedroom before he he already wants to smash you. That's why. Say, say it again. Femininity makes what feel good? Makes him feel good. So, exactly. tala I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, <laughs> he already wants to smash you upon sight, but it's that femininity that gets his attention. Like, well, whoa, 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 let me slow my roll. This might be the real deal. And a lot of sisters just don't know how to lock a brother down to the point where he's like. Okay, I got to seal a nice deal. I, I have to take her on a nice date. Uh, Applebee's just won't do. Netflix and chill just won't do. I have to. Let me call my boys and see what the happening restaurant is because I have to make an impression because I like the way she makes me feel. And a lot of sisters don't have that. They got the weave. They got the they face beat. The body's a beat. But, okay. He starts talking to her and it's just like every other woman. But when he meets Amy, she's talking about how she's traveled. She's talking about her childhood. It's like this analogy is like he's skipping through daisies with her. And he's just kind of like, oh, you know, he she puts him into a pleasant place because of that femininity. And sisters are just, I got issues and I got hangups and everything is about hangups. Everything is about this negative place and 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 brothers just simply want to smile and cooperation and sisters are coming with and i know sis i know we got a lot of stuff from our past that's why we need to heal so that when we go out in public it's hello how are you and he's like did she just say hello how are you like you throw him off because you're so different from all the other sisters he's met now he's curious now he's telling this ain't real. So he's going to throw you a trigger question. And then when he throws you that trigger question, you answer it right. And he's like, am I being pumped? Wait, where's the camera? Ashton Kutcher is just going to drop out of the sky any second because this is too good to be true. She fine. She's intelligent. And she's feminine. Whoa. And she's black. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Blow his mind. Now he's like, he's like, I, I found me a real. Now he's excited. Now he's put you on a pedestal and sisters knock themselves right off. But some sisters never get on the pedestal. They never make it past the first conversation. They already talk about sex, how they suck it, how they lick it, where they going to do. The first date is a smash. Literally, they're smashing on the first date. So what's there for him to stick around for? You just like everybody else. You just like all the women in his inbox. You're just like all the women on his page, just like all the women at his job. All the women he meets when he goes out, it's nothing special about you. But Becky, she might be just as much as a freak, but she has that femininity. So he'll deal with that until he can find a woman that has the virtue to go with it and kick it with her. 
Uh, this is what I also want to say um, to add to that. You know, I've noticed also. Um, okay, in LA, our movement made a video about this a little, many years ago, but I've noticed as living in Poland and dealing with, you know, primarily African American women in the United States, but even in in Europe, right? Black women, one thing that they share, whether they're African or Black, uh, African American, they they're very standoffish. Um, and I mean, for whatever reason that could be. But one thing that I do notice that, you know, like black women, they like they, they are the least likely to speak, say hello. Um, even if you say hello to them, it's like, hi, or nigga, who you talking to? Or you know what I mean? I know like if you ask her, like, you should smile. Nigga, don't tell me to smile. It's like, all right. Yes. Cool. Like Jamaria said, we need y'all to smile. She right, listen. And that's one thing that you know, like a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, white women or um, non-black women, they 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 get that, you know. And when you're coming across a culture of women and they understand, like, you know, even the culture, and they're shy, but you know, they're 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 much more willing to speak. Hey, how are you doing? Um, and when as a man, when you start to experience that, and I've been to a few countries in the world, and it's when you, and you feel like it's coming from a genuine place. We love it's it. like, oh, you know what I mean? And I, I, I tell you, like I, like I told Dora, I tell people uh, on public, this is one of the reasons why I'm afraid to date a white woman. Because if I, if I do and I like it, I ain't coming back. I'm telling you, it's going to be the mulatto sphere. It's going to be some selling out going out here. Y'all can expose me right now. It's on the record. So this is what, you know, and trying to work with our people. I even try to tell black men, when you come across other black men, because black men are bad at this too with other brothers. It's okay to speak. You know what I mean? When you see black men speak, you know, hey man, how you doing? You ain't gotta know. Get a nigga the head nod. You know, like back in the day, you used to walk by Universal. Yeah. Give, give a nigga the head. Do one of these. You know, something. Give a nigga a peace sign. Y'all niggas be walking around looking all angry and all mad. You know, and you 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 put that energy off. And then black women, they have that energy too. And it's like, a, and, and, and you could be a very good person and you could be have a very beautiful spirit, but you just look like you're standoffish and no man wants to deal with that. Let me just say this before we get back to this. I was at, at this restaurant yesterday and I could tell this lady was having a real fucked up day and white lady, but it, it showed through her and it was, it was so nasty. And the first thing I thought of, damn, she reminds me of a black chick. And I had to catch myself. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And then for a lot of black men that want to deal with black women, it makes it quite difficult because nobody wants to deal with you when you have that that attitude. or Because everybody has a bad day, right? I, I get it. You know, you didn't spill the coffee on your dress or your collard green sandwich didn't come out right. But for the women, y'all don't understand how, how y'all, you know, because you don't know who this guy is that's, that's trying to say hello to you. This could be a dude that could change your life and you don't know it. And you just fucked it up because you had a shitty attitude. You know what I'm saying? And you just don't really get that from other groups of women as much as you get it from black women. Well, black women, they are much more likely to give you a bad attitude or anything. And it's just so, st I mean, I don't know. Go, go ahead, uh, Nicole. Yeah. Um, what What's happening is black men are meeting sisters and uh, they're mad and then the brothers are mad and so nobody's connecting. Right. But somehow we still keep having black babies born. Black digress. Um angry fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I went ham on one of my Facebook posts uh and on my live. That was one of my most popular lives to date because I was going ham on sisters. I said all I did was tell you guys to smile at every black man you see and they went ham oh well what if he want to talk to me and i'm looking at your profile i'm like you overweight and you're talking about what if he want to talk what if he wants to talk to you you ought to be glad he wants to talk to you can i keep it 156 percent? like you are walking around here mm -hmm. you need to smile some of you guys are not as pretty as you think you are you need to add to it hello how you doing show some teeth you got all your teeth show them <laughs> I just really like listen I understand sisters have a lot of issues it's not the stranger's job to heal you 
sis, you got to heal yourself before you get, a lot of women are in relationships and they are dealing with emotional issues from childhood, teen years, they've been raped, molested, you name it, they've had it happen and they just go from man to man to man to man to man. Sis, what you looking for? None of those men are doctors and none of them are your dad. You need to go talk to somebody, a professional, not your prad pastor and not your cousin. I'm talking about your uh, legitimate professional. Or you can talk to me for one forty-five an hour. Uh, <laughs> work through this. No, sit, no, I'm so serious. I know that's like, right. A lot of them need to go talk to somebody and work through this because what you're doing is setting yourself up to be that chick, the one he calls at twelve o'clock on a Friday night. Y'all, what you doing? Yeah, I might roll through. Might mean might. That means you are last. First of all, you are nothing but a booty call, but then you're the last booty call, meaning he had other booty that was better than you that he called. You ended up being the last, so he fall through about three. You actually let him over. He smashes. That's you. Mm -hmm. Or you're the girl that's in his inbox talking about, I'm going to be in your city. We should hang out. You're that girl. Or you're the girl that um, is always on social media talking about what black men don't do and black men this, and black men that. That's you. That's you. That You need healing. Get the healing and then be the best you. Then come back and complain. Women who are happy are not on social media going in on brothers and how brothers need to do this and brothers need... Because they have a brother in the house. And even if they're not in a relationship, they're still happy with self. Heal thyself. Healthy self, heal thyself. Healthy self is heal thyself. That's the whole premise of the inner beauty movement. I don't do matchmaking. You know why? Because that allows women to be lazy and they don't fix themselves, heal themselves, and mm -hmm. make themselves the better woman, the best woman they can be before they enter a relationship. They just rely on Nicole is going to go find me somebody that looks good on paper and then I'm going to meet him. He's going to be fine. He's going to think I'm fine and we're going to live happily ever after. I'm not wasting my time like that. No. What I do is help women get healthy, get healed and then I teach them femininity and wife skills so they can go out there and get their own man. That's what I teach. I don't have time to teach you how to pick up men. You don't need me to teach you how to get in some man's inbox. You don't need mm -hmm. me to do that. I don't teach that. I teach uh, women how to be virtuous women that attract mass quality masculine men to them. So, yeah, it's that's a lot. And it, unfortunately, O'Shea, a lot of brothers are, they really don't want to date outside the race. They really do love sisters. They are dedicated to really helping us get better. That's why they fuss at us continuously some are harsher than others um but at the end of the day the message is still i love you that's why i'm fussing at you get it together but sisters have this pushback and this pride that uh and this 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 whole defense mechanism because they saw mama doing it all and they really are afraid to really let their guard down and let a man love them so they've resorted to just accepting sex and favors from a man and, and an occasional baby because opening up and putting their heart on the line is just too risky. Mom, it didn't work out for mom. They never saw, you know, healthy relationships. And then they watch so much TV that demonizes black men. I hate that word, but that's the only word I can think of right now. Um, that makes black men look the worst. And then, you know, they're surrounded by brothers who, you know, um, may not look at them favorably for whatever reason. So they internalize this as I'm not desirable, I'm not wanted, I'm not good enough. So let me just settle for the dick. You know, the dick challenge, whatever. That's their life is the dick challenge. It's just like going from the cop carousel, just one, 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 one man after the next. And it never stops. Sis, stop, stop. Close your womb and heal. Detox. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Let me do this. Let me uh 646 people here and y'all not liking the videos. Listen, Jesus paid it all on the cross so y'all can like uh, it for free. It don't cost you nothing to like the damn video, okay? So again, we got almost uh 700 people coming up so I see 68. That's really good for a midday show. Some of y'all about to get fired um from your job. Some of y'all in the bathroom watching this shit on the toilet, you'll break bent over. If you get fired, it's not my fault. I try to tell y'all 
Don't y'all y'all know hey, y'all work for the white pray. man. Go ahead. Oh Lord, please pray. Yeah, yeah, y'all gonna yeah. If y'all get so continue to like the video. Thank we thank you for being here. Okay, appreciate you all for being here. Get it's, thank you three twenty two. Give me help me to get to four hundred. Okay, um, four hundred likes help a black person out. Okay, this is help a nigga week. <laughs> so let's do me a favor and get me to four hundred likes, right? And for all of you who are uh, appreciating the content, you know we're working really hard here in Black YouTube to bring the better content creators. We're trying to you know, trying to give a better vibe and make the shows more fun and make the content more, um, you know, you know, more interesting. Um, do me a favor and subscribe to Nicole. OK, all that you need to do is go into the description, subscribe to her, hit the bell. OK, and this is what I need you to do for me while we're doing this. And I thank you. For, thank you for being here. She has fifteen hundred and thirteen subscribers. Now, I would like before the end of this show. For her to be at 1650. Okay. Now I know I asked you a lot for just liking a video, right? But for you to go over and subscribe to her channel, that would be a really great thing. If you go into the description, there's her link, and you hit that link and you hit the subscribe and hit the bell. That would be 16. So I need 137 people to do that for me. Okay. And again, this is about. Uh, black people helping each other. This is, you know, like I said, black YouTube. We're really trying to work together here and bring you guys best content and bring you more shows because people be like, I need more streams. I need more streams. I need you to like more videos. OK, so I want I want you guys to do that. We can have these discussions. Now, while we're doing this, let me just uh, read off some super chats here real quick. And thank you for those who are watching and those who are restream. K Jonesy, Tea Time with Nicole, Clay Pro. Thank you for your 10 hour super chat. Are black women raised to be masculine? Yes, I believe so. Green Machine, yeah, your sis, you're 100% correct. I told my ex this. Jamarius Willis, he said that, all right, y'all, why Max? Shout out to the colored girls. <laughs> the reason why I said betas act like experts is because they have the least arguments, but good arguments help grow. DMAC, do feminine women see white men as masculine? Uh, Martin Walton, loving the message. DJT. Dari nine, thank you so much. What does submission mean to feminine woman? Let me kind of get to back to this um this this submission piece, and let me get to this masculine piece. Um, one of the moderators, Young J two one six, was talking about you know there's a lot of hyper masculinity in the black community. Um, what I mean, you you, you, you okay? Let me let me say this. You talked about masculinity by being logical, analytical, Linear. being able to solve problems. Yes. Okay, being able to so this is and this is what I would definitely agree with you on masculinity. Um, unfortunately, a lot of African American women, um, at least the claim is they don't know what masculinity is, so therefore they go for, towards the guys that are hyper masculine. These are the guys who tend to be a little bit more loud, abrasive, flashy. Uh, you know, guys who are um very self centered. Okay, um. And a lot of guys who might be masculine might not be as exciting, might be a little bit more boring. Um, what ways do you feel that women can be able to notice uh, masculine men when they see it versus differentiating it from the hyper masculine, you know, the muscles and the tattoos and stuff like that? Uh, well, O'Shea, I cry foul once again. This is a lot of women's. Uh, efforts into deflecting from the fact that they don't know how to choose quality masculine men. Uh, it's called compatibility, sis. <laughs> uh, you have to still com com you know, be compatible with him in order to enter a relationship. You as the woman, the owner of the womb, hello, you need to vet who you allow in between your legs. That is not rocket science. It's not, oh, well, he's just a man and I couldn't help but enter into a relationship with him. Whoa, it's me. I'm the victim. Cut it out. Stop it. Take ownership. You chose that man and that's what you have. Sign up for my course at in the innerbeautymovement.org and I will teach you how to select quality masculine men and stop deflecting. Because that's all it is, O'Shea. When they start talking about hyper-masculinity, they can't even define masculinity, much less hyper. What's hyper-masculinity? And if they are trying to somehow uh, establish this, this narrative that black men are these 
dominating figures. What do they dominate? They don't dominate the homes. They're not dominating corporate America. What do they dominate exactly? You, because you're with a uh, masculine, uh, you're with a masculine man who wants respect in his home because he pays bills. That's dominating you. That's dominating you because he's in the home. He's protecting you. He doesn't want you running the streets with your girlfriends and not knowing where you are because he can't protect you. That's dominating you. That's dominating you because he wants you to dress decent so that these stupid dusties don't walk up to you and disrespect you. Then you got to punch the light, punch his lights out for disrespecting this woman. That's dominating you. That's dominating you because he doesn't want you sleeping around, catching diseases, getting pregnant by miscellaneous men. That's dominating you, sis. Really? That's dominating you, the family, because he is a disciplinarian to your children. That's dom. I like that domination. Hello. I like that. Because <laughs> he wants somebody at home with the children, nurturing children. He doesn't want dominant society to have access to his children for eight to ten hours a day while you you both go to work. He wants somebody at the house actually looking over his children. That's domination. Give me that domination any day. And I had that and messed it up. This is why I tell women I'm out here in the going hard in the paint for my sisters so that they don't make the same mistakes I made being a narcissistic wanting it all I was the only child I was spoiled I was daddy's princess and mommy's baby I was the only child and it's what does Nicole want with Nicole with my needs surpass sometimes the household needs and I was used to that well I need this and that's all that matters well that that's not conducive for a healthy relationship sis that's gonna get you left it's gonna get you cheated on <laughs> <laughs> and dog and so let's put the onus back on women okay because you have the womb the onus 90 percent of the onus really is on you this 10 percent of that belongs to the brothers and i'm saying that use that percentage again if you want to yes 10 percent of it belongs to brothers they need to strap up cut it up or do whatever they need to do to quit making babies that they can't take care of, won't take care of, or don't plan to take care of, or they don't want uh, a relationship with the baby's mother, whatever, in you know, whatever you want in that. Yes, that's his responsibility to do that. But you have the womb. You are the gateway to life. We have so many forms of a, uh, uh, um, birth control out here and you up here talking about well these hyper masculine men so so you were just helpless uh when y'all made that baby on friday night at 3 a.m that was you was just helpless come on sis come on i don't buy it and in my movement i tell ladies don't come with the malarkey because i'm gonna call you out on it every single time i hope women respond this is part of healing is being held accountable. I have single mothers in my group going harder than some of the other women. You know why? Because they're like, I hear that. I wish you were here before I had these children, but I hear you, sis, and I'm trying to do better, and I'm going to do better. And I'm like, you know what? You're 10 steps ahead of most of the other women out here. And what you'll see is you'll see a lot of single mothers getting it together who are beautiful, but they got a kid, and she's going to win a brother over a woman without kids uh, because he's trying not to go cross that river to the, to the non-blacks. He's trying to stay and he's going to be in and say, but she's, she has everything else to compensate for that kid. You're going to see a lot of brothers doing that. And we can't beat those brothers up either because there are some sisters who are banging, beautiful, intelligent, and they made a mistake. And now they're trying to redo it. And they just had a couple of things they need to twerk and they'll be good wives, but they have a baby. So we can't beat those brothers up who give them a second shot either. But uh, mm -hmm. the majority of them that have the kids and a lot of them, we, we know why they're single mothers because their thought process is still rebellious. It's still argumentative. It still doesn't respect masculinity. It still disrespects black men. Uh, they still don't know their place. Uh, their position as a feminine woman, they fight common sense. So now we know why they're single mothers, and they'll continue to be single. Let me let me do this. And guys, uh, again, thanks for all the support. I'm gonna read the super chats back. Uh, hopefully, we can get my UK guys back on this Saturday. Shout out to Senator Truth. Um, but let me ask you this: 
Um, you briefly mentioned about you personally made a mistake. You had a very good husband, made a mistake, and um, and what you're trying to do. <laughs> I ain't saying he's perfect. Well, uh, very perfect. Okay, but you made a mistake. Okay, yeah. Right. Because I know I ain't shit, so I'm just you know whatever. But but let me let me let me let me let me say this. You also mentioned previously that a lot of your friends influenced you um to you know do certain things in your relationship that turned out to be um you know not not to the to, to your advantage let's talk to people especially the women i guess right now that may be listening about how listening to your friends about your relationships can can, can damage it in your case if you'd like to talk about that um and, and how it affected your relationship and while you're saying that, i'm just going to restroom real quick okay well, what I can say is that there were a lot of lessons my mom uh, did not really expound on. So I had to learn on the job training, if you will, uh, in marriage. And I dropped the ball. Um, I don't talk about my marriage in debt, but I do uh, mention that my divorce uh, uh, to lend credibility to my message because people say, oh, you've never been married. Yes, I have been legally married. And I'm being an elderly woman <laughs> teaching the young women how to get married because I've done it and what mistakes not to make because there's not enough women out here doing that. The happy women are happy for a reason. They're at home and doing what they need to do. Um, so that that's, that's important. Um, and I don't harp on that because he's not here to defend himself, number one. So I only talk about what I did. Um, and narcissism will definitely kill a relationship, whether it's the wife or the man. And a lot of people just don't understand masculine and feminine energy. And if they knew, understood it more, they would be more successful um, in their relationships. And I forgot the rest of your question. Um, <laughs> let me look in the chat room. Um, She's elderly. <laughs> I am elderly. <laughs> I'm not that old, but yeah. Um, a lot of women aren't taught how to be feminine, but there's no more excuses for that because I have a course that teaches them femininity. I forgot the second part of your question because I was rambling as I do often do, so I apologize. Were you, you, were you covering the part where you, some of the fans were interfering in, the, in your mm. relationship? Friends. Absolutely. Um, ladies, please understand, the majority of black women will not get married. I believe the last statistic I saw was 48% um, of black women will not, and this is in the U.S., 48% of roughly, give or take, of them will not get married ever. That's almost half. So that means some of your girlfriends are not going to get married. So what does that mean? When you meet a good brother, some people that are not mature enough to handle that, they may throw salt in the game. Sometimes you're going to have to throw out, uh, throw out the TV, stop watching so much TV, because these, these television shows do not help marriages. They hurt. Um, you're going to have to stop listening to mama, because mama might not have been married, or maybe she had a failed relationship or relationships. Um, Uh-oh. And yeah, so that's just, I'm not saying dog mama because that's bringing a curse upon your life. But what I am saying is that you're going to be like, mom, I got this. A lot of times sisters get caught up in dating a man that everybody else wants. And I get that concept. I understand that we want social proof. We want the guy that, ha ha, you're jealous of me because I got this man or whatever. And, and I know we want social proof. We want social validation. I get it. But that's not always right and proper and appropriate sometimes the brother for you is not the six four brother the tall lanky brother that is you know he walks in the room he may not be boris kojo or idris elba and i hate using idris because he kind of likes those ratchets uh, <laughs> uh but you know what i mean he he may not be that brother that everybody's swooning on a lot of times a brother uh that is like a a, a nerd uh, kind of the nerdy boy, right? And he gets with the beautiful chick. Now everybody wants him because he's able to pull a beautiful chick or a desirable chick. 
now all the chicks are looking at, dang, he is kind of cute, girl, because they see them, you know, walking in the restaurant all hugged up and, you know, cupcaking in public. Now, all of a sudden, he's desirable by all these women. Um, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you got to be the one to take a chance on a brother and be like, you know what? He's, he's kind of cute. And sometimes he'll put it on you like, whoa. Now, there are some ugly brothers that try to be players, and I'm like, let me remind you. <laughs> let me break out a mirror. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> let me just remind you, Lee. Check yourself. No, nah, you have those brothers that still try to be players, and they're not that attractive. But you have the brothers out there. They're, they're not stunting. They're not putting, you know, um, driving the fl flashiest car. They're not wearing the most expensive gear. They're not in the club hitting on every woman on the gr um, dance floor grinding. They're not flossing, pushing beamers and benzes. They're just ordinary dudes. But you'll never know because you never took a chance on them. Your loss. But then Amy, who is really looking past, the, she's looking at his potential. She's looking at his focus, his drive, his ambition. She discovers he's sitting on six figures in the bank. But you'll never see that by the car he drives, the clothes he wears. You'll never know that he has several businesses. You'll never know that he owns a tech company. You'll never know any of that. Because you weren't special enough to take the time to get to know a brother. And that takes healing because in order for you to take the time to open up to someone else and bring them out of themselves to start talking about themselves, you have to be healed. You have to be in a good place. And a lot of sisters aren't in a good place. Well, let me, let me, let me ask you, uh, you know, this, um, you talk about being in a good place. Let me not even deal with that. Let me let me deal with a controversial thing. There are some people who will say that the reason why black women have treat black men a certain way is simply because black men as a group do not do enough. They're not doing enough for their community. They're not doing enough for themselves. Uh, this was a, a pretty pretty like black men don't even care about themselves enough as a group to stand up for themselves with rights and stuff like that. So when, when black women see, and you mentioned a, a case, whether you knew it or not, you were describing a man who didn't have the answer. He had to go call another man to get the help and give his woman the answer. But what I see that a lot happens a lot between black men is that the black men typically are not trying to help each other as much. That's something I talk to my guys about. And one of the things that, that black women say, well, listen, you guys are not trying to do things for yourself or stand up for yourself. So how can we respect you? Do black women, in your opinion, have a point that black men are not doing enough? If you even take away black women out of the equation, are black men doing enough to earn respect in this country from black men, w women? Well, when they ask that question, you guys need to flip it and go, Okay, well, are you talking about dusty men? Or are you talking about quality masculine men? Because there's a difference. I refuse to sit up here and talk about what dusty black men are doing. I just mm -hmm. I don't waste my time on that. I don't waste my energy on that. I, I, I talk about quality masculine men who I do see active because uh -huh. and they come to my life. I see the Tyreeks, the Jason Blacks, the O'Shea's, the Obsidians, I, the Law, uh, Law Movement. I see those men. So I don't focus on men who are dusty, busty, and all that other stuff, and sit up here and go back and forth about what they're not doing. I focus on the men who are doing, who I can show W's in their column. And that's what mm. sisters need to start doing. Stop believing white supremacist narrative of what brothers ain't doing. First of all, as long as we're spending billions of dollars on weed, billions of dollars on getting our nails done, Okay, and I've asked tons of times, is there a nail tech in Buckhead? I will go to you. That is African-American. I will go to you. Uh, and uh, will we stop spending billions of dollars into the Asian communities, into their businesses? Will we support our businesses without 99 uh, excuses when we start taking care of our own care, 
our own makeup, our own products, and pushing our own products so that we can strengthen our economic base so that we can empower the black men. We don't have a leg to stand on talking about what they're not doing. Both teams need to mm-hmm. t- do a team huddle and fix themselves. And the Dusties and the Busties need to stop having a voice. The Dusty men need to stop having the voice. Yes, they have a voice on YouTube. A lot of them have a voice on social media and even TV because that's the narrative the dominant society wants to push, of course. So, yes, they're going to push our weakest in front of us as our representative. And those 10% of brothers, whatever percentage you want to add to, you know, quality masculine men, those men need to grab the mic like I'm doing. Hey, ratchets do not represent sisters. Thoughts don't represent sisters. Real Housewives of Atlanta, the all that other crap you see on TV does not represent what's out here. Sisters like me. You do not represent me. You don't speak for me. Time out for that. All this black male bashing, black man ain't this, black man ain't that. You are actually toxic to what I'm trying to do. Because sisters are coming to me talking about, I want to be married. I want to... So all that Blashing, uh, bashing brothers and demonizing black men and masculinity is actually not what sisters really want. They really want a husband in the house, paying bills, taking care of her, loving her, pampering her, mm. and taking care of her. Uh, and then I flip it and I go, okay, okay, what if I could tell, what if I told you that I could help you get that? But you have to be feminine and submissive. What would you do? See, when I flip it, they go, oh, I got to be submit. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no, you can't talk back to him. No, you can't talk to him any kind of way. No, you can't run out and screw everybody to and, and have him respect you. No, you can't disrespect him. No, you can't roll and cut your eyes at him on national TV. No. You have to learn how to budget. No, you can't spend $500 a month on hair and you can't afford it. You have to live within your means if you want to be a stay-at-home mom. A lot of these women are talking about mm-hmm. just today. I posted about that that meme you posted today. They're still trolling me as we speak, talking about arguing with me for the right to continue working. And I'm giving them the option to say, Hey, there are quality masculine men that would love a wife to stay at home uh, and take care of the house and the kids. But y'all want to work. Nah, what's wrong with me having education? You're teaching them not to have an education. I'm like, no, I have a degree. Do I ever mention that I have a degree on any of these lives? No. Because it doesn't matter. (laughs) Why does it matter? First of all, a man can't screw my degree. He can't fall in love with my degree. Right. My degree can't clean the kitchen, make meatloaf. My degree can't rub his feet. My degree is not going to make him fall in love with me. What's going to make him fall in love with me is my femininity. My individual femininity, my individual personality. They're arguing with me for the right to remain workhorses because they are that much, that feminism is that much in their brains. I got to go to work. I got to go to work. Because mm-hmm. they're told that brothers ain't nothing. That brothers don't want to co- Brothers are out here, blue collar brothers that I know personally and I've seen on social media, and thousands of brothers out here trucking businesses, mm-hmm. cleaning businesses, tech businesses, all kinds of businesses you can't even imagine. But you'll never see them because they're not on social media bragging about what they have. They're not bra- real estate businesses, flipping houses all kinds of businesses, you name it. They're not in corporate America where they're going to be emasculated every day by the dominant society and by black women. No. So they've gone out and started their own businesses. They're working at these companies. Some of them making 60, 70,000 don't have a degree in the world. And they're making more than these women that have degrees. Please Mm -hmm. explain that. See, we never talk about those brothers. No, they're not walking around in a suit and tie. A lot of times their job allows uh, requires that they be in jeans and things like that. So, yeah, for, you know, when they're working in that vein, they have on that attire. But those brothers make bank. And they'll never go around broadcasting that because sisters are so shallow about what they want. And then brothers ain't stepping up. Brothers ain't stepping up. Oh, they <laughs> step up all the time for me. Right. <laughs> all the time. So 
when they start talking about what well, brothers ain't doing this, just flip it. What what flip it? Mm-hmm. Just flip the question. And and they'll say, Well, you're not answering my question. Yeah, we are, because there are brothers that are, but you're never gonna see that in the media. They're never gonna compound those numbers to make brothers look good. Mm-hmm. Let me let me say this also. Um there's an article that's out right now where um out of the 20 million black men in America, like 2.5 million of those African American men are like in upper class status. That means making over, I don't know, to be in the upper class in America, you have to be making more than $180,000 a year. So you have that many black men making, you know, shit, I ain't one of them. But it just goes to show you that, you know, and I try to tell people this too, to, 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 to be on your point. A lot of people are focused on, what they don't want instead of being focused on what you do want. And that's why I tell you, Nick, you, I almost called y'all niggas. Well, you niggas, I told you niggas the same thing, Uh-oh. right? I'm just, I gotta be honest. Let me go on a little rant real quick. So many black men, and we have this in black YouTube, a lot of black YouTube content creators bring that negative energy to their platforms and it affects their subscriber bases. So they come in, they put this negative negativity out on YouTube and then it makes the subscribers negative and which is not, which is not fair. You know, yes, there's negative things in all facts. Like people think like you come to Poland, um, there ain't trashy people, there ain't bum people. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have your good and bad and everything, right? But you attract what you are. I'm a real big, big believer in that. You know, you are what you eat. You are what you attract. And you're going to find out, I'm going to say this before, we get back on the show. I went to Howard University uh, and uh, at Rankin Chapel, and the the dean says here at Howard University, first sermon of the year. You can find anything you want in university. Want to find people you can do drugs with? You'll find that. <laughs> if you want to find people that cut class, you will find that. If you want to find people that studying all night to become engineers, doctors, or lawyers, you will find that too. And this is the thing that, you know, we, we got to really understand that if you are a black man and you want a black woman, if you want to find a good black woman, if that's who you are and you really are trying to do that, you'll find it. If you want to find the hood rats and the hoes, you'll find that also. If you want to find, you know, people who are negative, you'll find that also, you know, and I think that was a great response to telling black women that, listen, you know, if you think that they're dusty, you know, why are you not putting your position self in positions to be around, um, you know, the 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 men who are doing things? I think that's a very powerful statement, because a lot of times I think in our community, we're so focused on all the time, the negative shit. You know, what I mean, that you see that all across black YouTube, like we get a notification like, oh, not this nigga uploading the video again. God. <laughs> Cause you know, if I if I if I watch this video, you know, I'm like I gotta unsubscribe this. From, he put me in a bad mood. So I think that the, the 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 balance in between you as a woman and me as a man, and we're talking about this is black men are black women. Hey, you know, you it's it's your up to you and your mindset as to who you're gonna attract to you in your life. If your life is fucked up, <laughs> if you ain't shit, if you attract ain't shit people, <laughs> it's up to you to you know what I mean to change your attitude towards to, towards life so that you can not get what you want. You know, and I think what you're saying is very very important. It's very 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 well very well put together. I cannot, I totally agree. Be the change that you want to see. And people, you know what, as you were trying to, you know, change your ways and stuff, you know, it's easy to be negative, but if you start being positive, people want to help you, you know? Yeah, I have, I have, um, 10 reasons why sisters won't, can't, or refuse to respect black men. Um, so whenever you want me to go, go ahead, read them all. One, they secretly want to compete with black men. Um, they compete in the workforce. Um, and so they translate that competing into the bedroom. They are unable to balance the masculine energy that they use in corporate America uh, or just the workplace in general. And they are not able to turn that off and be soft and feminine at home. So they stay in that competitive mode. And so the dominant society feeds us that sisters are supposed to be competing with brothers. Like, get on YouTube and compete for the most subscribers. Who gets spear the most hate? Like, it's just like, it's the competition. The competition is real. 
Uh, and brothers will tell you they've been in relationships with sisters literally are in competition with them. It's like being in a relationship with another man. Men don't want to compete with that woman. They want to love that woman and put her on a pedestal. <laughs> so she doesn't have to work hard uh, in terms of earning money in manual labor. She can earn money as a passive income, but get out there and compete in the doggy dog world where she comes home mad, busted and disgusted and frustrated because she's been in her masculine energy all day. Masculine man really doesn't want that for his woman. He wants to give her the best life he can possibly provide, but sisters are turning their backs on that, which leads me to number two. They tell black men, they're told that black men can't provide, which, you know, back to what you were saying, um, like there are men out here that are blue collar making bank, but those men don't get shy and they won't get shy because our society is not set up to praise black men to accentuate their qualities. Our society is set up to accentuate the dysfunction, not the good parts, right? Number three, uh, they have too much testosterone because the longer they're in, and uh, another young lady touched on this in Obsidian's uh, cha um, uh, show last night, that a lot of them are in the workforce longer, so that testosterone kicks in. Uh, where there should have been estrogen to have babies is turning into testosterone as they get older. And the longer they stay in the workforce, the harder and more masculine they become, and which in turn turns off masculine energy men. What it does, it turns on the dusty men and the beta males who are looking for a big mommy that can help pay bills and take care of him. Uh, that's what that turns on. And so that's why you have a lot of sisters that attract men who want to be taken care of. Because when you emit masculine energy, that's what you attract. When you emit feminine energy, you attract men who want to provide and protect you. Um, number four, they weren't taught by their mothers to respect men. If mom didn't have a husband or if you saw her go through a nasty divorce or you saw her be disrespectful to your father or man that she dated, you quite naturally think this is normal. Daughters repeat a lot of behaviors of their mothers. And, and so when they get into a relationship, they turn into their mothers. A lot of women don't want to admit that or they've struggled with that. But um, I, I tell women, you got to think back to your childhood, how mom behaved, and you'll see a lot of your behaviors mirror what mama did. And um, don't go cuss her out, don't curse yourself, but just kind of think about that and think about ways that you can be different to yield a different um, result. Number five, society doesn't respect black men. That's self-explanatory, I kind of already talked about that. Number six, <clears throat> black women say they want protection and provision, but they don't want to relinquish control. This comes with the submissive uh, thing about submission. And you cannot have a masculine energy man and an alpha masculine energy woman. One, because they're going to compete. They have the same energy. Two, the same things cannot occupy the same space. A masculine energy man has no problem providing and protecting. What black men are saying is we're not going to get out here and bust our tails every single day for a woman who doesn't appreciate me enough to respect me and enough to submit to my leadership. That's what they're saying. I hear a lot of masculine brothers saying I make good money. I had no problems with bringing a beautiful woman in, have my children, I take care of her, and I pay the bills and I provide and protect. What he's not going to put up with is you talking back to him, challenging him, bucking up to him, arguing with him. Uh, emasculating him, being disrespectful. They're not going to put up with it. They're not going to do it. Men have the option, thanks to feminism, to a lot of sexually free women. So while he's making all of this money and stacking his chips and got his nice little apartment and chilling, he can call any number one of the chicks in his phone. Oh, let me call Karen today. Get some of that. Oh, I want some chocolate tonight. Let me call uh, Lisa. Oh, yeah, I, I think I want to mix it up tonight. Let me call Amy. They have all these options thanks to free sex feminists, right? So they are not in a rush to settle down with a woman who possibly may even have kids in most cases. Settle down to be masculated and work itself to the bone for a woman who's unappreciative and unsubmissive, okay? Number seven, they already have children by other men that they're loyal to. A lot of women are still loyal to the baby daddies 
and the bad uh -oh. guys are still hitting that. And so the new guy comes in, and he's trying to be a good man and put that S on his chest. Yeah, I'm, you know, she's a beautiful woman. She made a mistake. And the woman just happens to be unappreciative. She doesn't appreciate it. She's still knocking off her boyfriend. Like, he's still able to, I'm sorry, her her baby daddy. She's still, he's still able to pop back in her life whenever he wants. So, remember, he didn't want her because if he did, he would have married her. But he's able to pop back into life with the kids as an excuse and hit that whenever he feels like it. So, she's submissive to him. <laughs> but she ain't submissive to her new man. All right, which is another form of emasculation and disrespect. And number eight, they're more respectful to corporate America and will follow the rules that the college and universities taught them. They'll follow what the university and college rules taught them more than they'll follow a man. So giving respect to a black man is like not a, a question. It's such a it's like pulling hair. It's like pulling teeth. It's like, oh, my God, be respectful to a black man. Because corporate America college has taught women to be submissive and obedient to corporate America. They want your hair long and straight. That's what you do. They want your makeup like this. That's what you do. You don't wear braids. You don't wear afros. You don't do You wear what we want you to wear. You look the way we want you to look in our, in our area, our uh, atmosphere. So when a black man comes with his own standards and requirements, because remember, if his level of success is determines his standards. So if he's reached a certain plateau in his life where he feels like he's successful and he wants a certain type of woman and he has standards, she's looking at him like Shh, in a disrespectful tone because how dare a black man have standards? How dare you have standards? Number nine, I'm almost done. Um... A lot of black men are accessories and utilities for sisters. You are used for money and sex. Mm -mm. Like sisters are pimping brothers. <laughs> you are dicks and wallets. To put it bluntly. And it's easier that way. Well, why do you why do you say that black men are accessories to black? What, 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 I mean, if someone asks you, how do you know this? Because how black women act when you start talking about marriage you ought to see how a lot of women defend being single mothers how a lot of women defend free sex uh how a lot of women defend uh just living frivolously and raising kids alone they defend this they don't say oh well i didn't know any better and i made a mistake or you know i that wasn't my intention to raise kids alone no they say i want to raise kids alone i don't need a man they literally say this they literally say, well, everybody doesn't want to be married. Some of us just want to be. It's like, I'm, but you want to have children, though. So make that make sense. You're okay with not being married, but you want to have children. So you're okay with bringing children in the world disadvantaged without both its parents, at least trying or attempting to have a stable environment. You're not even trying. So. Because of that, they treat black men like utilities and accessories, not partners. Mm -hmm. All right. And so to men, they are sperm. They are and they're banks. That's what they are. And a lot of brothers have really articulated this saying they're so afraid. Sisters, let me tell you, you know why men don't commit? They have a huge fear of being a dick in a wallet to you. That's it. They have this huge fear of that. When you can figure out, after you take my courses, you will know how to beat this fear and how to make him know that you're the real deal. Mm -hmm. You go out here freestyling, he's not going to take you seriously. He's not going to commit. And number 10, they are just simply afraid. They're emotionally unavailable women due to not healing. Their wall is up. They are not healed. And they just go from man to man, man to man, open womb, instead of healing. So they are literally terrified of having a, a, a long-term committed relationship with a black man. 
That was a good one. Uh, so wait a De- Devin's cool, young Jay. I touch. She- <laughs> wait a minute. He- she got timed out on accident. Let me. Uh, so Devin's cool because I-, I actually orange her first. So sorry, Devin. You got sent to the wall on accident. Let me do this real quick. Um, y- y'all leave Devin alone, man. She's cool. She got timed out on accident. Now to all of them getting there. Um, seven hundred and thirty people watching now. Actually. This is pretty good for this channel because I don't really go live that much on my main channel like I used to. But um, good to see y'all back on the O'Shea Duke Jackson live. I mean, main channel. We got a great guest. And this is crazy, right? Because some of y'all are at work. Some of y'all, well, some of y'all about to get fired. Uh, <laughs> don't get written up. <laughs> y'all about to get, some of y'all, somebody somebody is, some, some customers is waiting right now. Okay, so do me a favor. Someone get her a show. Okay, this is what I want you to do, right? Y'all talking about preach, 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 preach. Now, I need 31 people to like the video right now. Hotel, come on. I need you. Don't don't make me. Don't make me in this show right now. Okay. Now, listen, you Negroes know that that that's over here. Y'all know that the likes are free because Jesus paid it all on Calvary. 34 people. Come on. Get them up. Get the likes up real quick. Those of you watching live, some of y'all probably, you know, because you know how it is, Nicole. Some people, they they're not. Live, live. Some people started watching from like the beginning already. Mm-hmm. So get the likes up. Okay. Thank you. 477. Do me a favor. Take us to 500. 508. Woo! Look at you. See, free shit. I'm telling y'all, man. Free <laughs> shit is cool. Now, all right. Okay. Now, let me check this out. I was asking for y'all to do me a favor. I was asking for y'all to do me a favor. Subscribe. 1,554 subscribers. How many did you have before you came on today, Nicole? Do you know? 14 something. 14, Four, that's not good enough. 1460 something. That's not good enough. Okay, guys, listen, we can do better than that. So I'm gonna put her link in the channel right now, okay? In the Thank inbox. Guys. Okay. I want 60 people to do me a favor right now before we continue this thing. You can either go into the description, click on her channel, hit the bell, and subscribe, or the link that I have right now. I need 60 people to take her to 1600. See, it's easy. It's easy. Y'all see, we ain't even asking y'all to do nothing. Just do some free shit. You see, free shit is easy to do. Okay, let's see. 1554. Where do I see 1600 at? Oh, 1559. All right, 41 more people to subscribe to her channel. Come on, help me out now. Help me help you. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, who else? Who else? 736. Hold on one second. Oh, Nicole, we're going to finish it. And I'm going to shout out the super chats. Okay. 1579. Damn. Okay, y'all doing pretty good. Do I got 21? 21 more people. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for subscribing. Now, 21 more people. Get us to 1,600. Thank you, Jermaine, for subscribing. I'm going to shout you out if you subscribe. Kareem, I got to check her out. Kareem, there you go. Kareem Sears. Like, Sears, the, the, the store? Did y'all go out of business? I never. I, I, I met a nigga named Kareem, but never met a nigga named last name Sears. That's like uh, Kareem Macy's, Kareem Daisy Penny's, <laughs> Kareem Walmart. Nigga, like, Oh uh, boy, you better not never do nothing with a name like that. They're gonna know you did it. Kareem no, Sears? Oh no yeah, yeah. He, he guilty. He did it. You can't you can't lie to that shit. Your name is too unique. I ain't never met a nigga last name Sears. But shout out to my brother though. I'm just playing with you. You're my play cousin. 1598. Okay, good. I need two more people to subscribe to the channel. Just sub. Thank you, Paul G. Thank you, James E. Jr. All right, now y'all come back to the goddamn show now. Some of y'all left and came back. Yeah, man, Kareem, you better not never do nothing, nigga. If you if you steal, if you steal some free shit, you going to jail. <laughs> nigga, you can't even go to the you can't even go to the clinic and, and take some free condoms and start running. Shit, with your name like that, <clears throat> thirty years, nigga. He's Kareem. Oh yeah, he did it. He locked his ass up. What did he do? Nothing. But look at that name, nigga. Sixteen hundred and six <laughs> subscribers. All right. Thank you guys so much. Okay. So I appreciate you brothers, man, for, for subscribing to her because you know what, you know, she, she's a, a great sister and she comes over and, 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 and talks with us and everything and she participates. Okay. So it was good to help. You know, we black people got to start helping each other out. Okay. Y'all got to stop being so damn stingy with the free shit. Okay. Let me <laughs> shout out some, uh, okay. So y'all, they came back, they left and now they came back and called me. I went and subscribed. Let me come back to the show. I love this show. This is some good shit. All right. And if you, for y'all, that's that's um not no. Some of y'all might not be subscribed to my channel. Go ahead and subscribe <laughs> to my shit too. Don't you, don't you leave here without subscribing to my shit. Man. <laughs> Hit the bell too. The notification bell. All right. So if you are not subscribed to me, 
Subscribe right now in Jesus' name and hit the bell on my shit. Okay. G Star, thank you again, brother. Australian ten dollars. Has Azira. Hi, I am a trucker. How do I contact Nicole for a couple counseling? What will the cost be? And how can he reach you? Yes, he can reach me. Uh my email, ladylike lessons for mm-hmm. you, F-O-R-U-Y-O-U at Gmail. Let me do this real quick. Let me also do that. So for those people that would like to uh, contact Nicole, you know, don't y'all send no dick pictures or anything like that. Oh, my Lord. Because, you know, <laughs> I got to say it. <laughs> you know how y'all y'all are. But I'll tell you what I'll do. <laughs> they still do that? Uh, I mean, they are niggas. So <laughs> some of them are thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Thirst is real. Yeah. Okay. So listen, you want her email? Go into the description. Lady like lessons for F O R Y O U at hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I put hmail.com. Devil's busy. Email.com. All right. So, and guys, uh, uh, thank you. Let me read some more people off. True from Troy. Get the likes for the stream. Always good to have Nicole on here. Yes. Maddie Ghost, shout out Maddie Ghost. My dad still calls the shots even from a nursing home. In Collins Esquire, preach. Why, Mac? When you trying to make the 50 word limit, Hotep, Hotep, nigga. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, shit. Yeah, because you only get 50 words with the nine or dollar nine. Nicole, do you have a course on well, Lawrence? Okay, this is what he asks. Lawrence Harmon, Nicole, do you have a course on femininity for young girls 13 to 16 years old to stop masculine, aggressive black woman problems before it starts? Uh oh. Yes, I do. I haven't released. I haven't released it, but I do. Yes. Okay. Okay. It's. it's at, I can actually release it today because it's still a lot of some of the um, same lessons. So if you're interested, just email me and I will uh, send you an invite to the course and let you sign up for it. Absolutely. And I have uh, church modules for uh, churches and uh, church hospitality. I have. A course on how to keep the marriage flames burning with some tips like I you know talked about earlier on how to keep it sizzling and hot for your husband. Um, I have that too. So if uh, you're interested in that, just email me because I have not made that uh, available to the world, but it is available on the website. Okay. 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 Cool. 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 All right. So, uh, also let me do this. Shout out to Senator truth. Clone this woman's brain, put them in the BT 1000. That's Tommy's, uh, uh, phrase Ted Randolph. In my actual factual opinion, a woman's definition of masculinity is pretty toxic. LOL. Hypergamy is a bitch. Shout out to my boy clay pro. How do we fix this problem? I think we've been talking about that today. Fly guy. Great message. Our women give me that negative. Who do you think you are? Look when I'm out looking fly. Our women need your guidance bad. Thank you so much, Fly Guy. Benham Smurf, Dollar, uh, K. Jones, Tea Time with Nicole. All right. And thank you, guys. Some of you guys have super chatted even more than once. I really thank you and appreciate you guys. Uh, Nicole, is there anything else that I'm missing that I didn't ask, maybe that you want to talk about right now? No. Um, just what I want to tell the Negro Manosphere is thank you so much for what you're doing with the Negro Manosphere. That's what initially attracted me to your channel was everything i thought i was going to see a lot of some of the other things that i see on the net um but i want to commend you brother o'shea and some of the men of the negro manosphere for what you're doing you are energizing brothers to flip that coin and better themselves as well which is the same thing i'm doing with my movement and also um i want to tell them they can go to my website innerbeautymovement.org and take a look around um i do have some downloadable material for men and women but also i have a wine course that's on sale for 19.99 so if you want to get familiar with wine uh sisters need you know they have to bring a lot of variety to the table especially a lot of sisters come to me talking about they want ballers they want a man to make money look the more money he makes the more you need to know to be able to offer him as a good wife. And let's be honest, O'Shea, a lot of non-black women come to the table with a lot of that knowledge that we didn't get growing up. Mm -hmm. So what I did was offer an etiquette course that teaches women uh, how to um, set a table, all of the dining etiquette, social media etiquette, um, 
all of that stuff. Just take a look around. And also, Wine 101 is on sale. I separated that. $19.99. You go in there, you learn the basics of wine so that when you entertain, you know the difference between Chardonnay, Rosé, and all of that stuff. And you really uh, come off like you're a little bit knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about wine. But it's the little things that women can do to become more attractive to men that they're trying to, uh, that they say they want. And the more money he has, the more he's looking at little things like that. Can you entertain? Can you make him look good when he goes out with his colleagues? Do you know how to entertain? Uh, do you know how to decorate? Do you know how to make something out of little? Um, those are the qualities, wife qualities that men are looking for other than just looking pretty and, and, and having the pretty look. What mm -hmm. else do you offer a man besides just looking good and you think your sex is good, but they're still not sticking around, sis. So you got to figure out some other little gimmick <laughs> to keep them around. Femininity sells itself. Uh, I really don't push it hard uh, in terms of women, you need femininity. Women know they need femininity. And you know why? Because we have people who teach femininity so that they can attract white men. Mm. So they know <laughs> they know they need to be feminine. They just want to fight me because it's from a sister and because she's making money at it. Listen, I'm teaching you because your mom did it. I'm not going to tell anybody you signed up for the course. Get the information. Forget right. how you feel about me. Forget my age, my status. Don't worry about my status. I'm good. <laughs> okay? What about you? What about you? Mm -hmm. Look at this weather. It's nice and crispy. It's nice, you know, uh, I was sipping on my tea earlier, but this is cocoa, uh, hot cocoa weather. You want to curl up with your loved one, and you don't have nobody. So while you're sitting up here judging me about how I look, my age, what I'm talking about, boo, get this information. Get this game from me. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about me. Get the, get the information mm -hmm. and go win, especially if you're under 30 and you come acting feminine, you'll get a ring within six months. Done. Mm. You're, be you're beautiful, you're in your 20s, and you're feminine, it's a wrap. But no, you're going to be hard-headed, and you're going to leave something mean on my page, telling me I don't, I'm old and I'm ugly, whatever. I was married at 23, so I I've already won. I'm in the second half of my life, and if I get married again, we're going to travel, make money, and kick it. That's what we're going to do. No mm. more babies and bottles and diapers. But you know, <laughs> no, I'm done. Let's where we, it's gonna be. We're going to Italy this week, okay, baby. Where are we going next week? That's how I'm looking at the second half of my life. Not trying to find somebody. Oh, I want to have a baby tomorrow. Now, I that ain't me, but that'll be you if you don't get this game and get this information. The brothers are here. I and I tell you, O'Shea, I tell them every day. There to me, there are more single, available, ready to marry men. Than it is sisters. Mm. And I think the statistics show, show to that. So let me shout out the last person, uh, Brandon Greer. I love her. Is she married? No, she's not married. Thank you so much for the super chat. And again, you know, I want to thank you, um, Nicole, for coming over. Thank you. Um, for for that. And uh, guys, I'm getting ready to release a Patreon video. Uh, I put out the new comic, Doctor Action. Um, I'm getting ready to put a Patreon video right after this episode five of the Thirst Box is coming to tomorrow. All right, I know a lot of guys are ready for that. Uh, <laughs> press six if you have seen the Thirst Box episode series. It's a Manosphere exclusive. So if you've seen the Thirst Box, um, press six uh, in the chat. Because a lot of guys they really like it. They're really crazy about it. So episode number five drops tomorrow. And I'm excited, just like you're excited. We got another another commercial from Reverend Do You Wrong. I will say you that. Have you seen my? Have you ever, you've never seen my uh, my uh, Thirst Box? Have you uh, serious? Have you uh, Nicole? No, no, no. Yeah, you're missing out. So uh, it's oh yes, I did. That's the cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah. that's the cartoon. Yeah. Yes, that's awesome. I want you to make up a bishop. He, he's the bishop, and he's you know bishop, whatever his name is, and you just. Yes, that's gonna be funny because you got that church thing going on. I love yeah. that. So I, I really want to thank all the people, right? I'm gonna start doing that for Patreon too, but unedited. You know, what I mean, I know y'all want some nigga shit on the Patreon, so I just want to thank everybody 
um, in this community, uh, it has really grown. I was talking to going about that on the phone. It's really opened up, you know, over the last year. You know, we have the at least the UK podcast on Saturday for the guys from the UK. Uh, you know, we have the Brother Pill. We have the Sunday Rumble, which is not necessarily a Manosphere show. But, you know, you have the big YouTubers coming on now. The Advice show, you know, Tommy stops in every now and then. Um, you know, Afro Synergy, ABL, Brandon Tatum. I mean, you know, people people um, are, are are coming over to, to, to this part of YouTube and we're open and we let people bring us different ideas. And I just want to thank the, 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 the brothers for their support. Um, you know, the guys support us on Patreon. You know, we wouldn't be where we are without you guys in this community. Uh, George Megan. So all of you guys, thank you. And, and, and but, but without uh, further ado, I want to thank you, Nicole, for coming over. And um and, and talking with us, you know, we you know we are you know people think that we hate women over here. We don't hate women. We just hate BBC censored with her fine ass. Go ahead and time her ass out again. Come on, <laughs> go ahead, BBC. Come on, I got I, I got some BBC for your ass to the wall. Get her out of here. Let's go. See you next episode. Get 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 her out of here. Let's go. Come on. You shouldn't have never said that. Submissive men are weak. No, mother. Come on. You are gonna be weak on this wall. Get her out of here. Let's go. To the wall. Hold on. Wait 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 wait. No 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 no. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, BBC, think about that in the wall. All right. So thank you, God. Thank you again. Anything else you want to tell the people? No, thank you so much. Check out my channel. I'll be doing a live later on today to kind of piggyback off of Sunday's YouTube. Uh, a lot of people are still talking about that. I want to talk about educated women. Is that what men are looking for? Educated and strong women. Is that what men are looking for in a relationship? So I'm going to be talking about that. And uh, just thank you so much. Go check out my website, theinnerbeautymovement.org. We're doing good things. Check out my uh, uh, Facebook is where you'll find me every day. I set it off literally every single day, probably except Thursday. Um, and you can find me on there and join my business page. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, also, you can go all of the information in the description for uh, her. Oh, Irene Yvette is here. Irene Yvette. Hey, Irene. <laughs> Irene, you... Uh, <laughs> You have some nice cleavage on your videos there, boo. But <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this has been on my mind. So I had to tell you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're working with a little something. But uh, so uh, Irene, Irene is here. Good to see Irene. She's been causing some ruckus in black YouTube. So um, again, thank you so much for uh, for the the, the support um, for, for coming over and everything like that. So guys, see you. See you. Got to get the fuck up out of here. Oh, shit. Maddie goes. He says you're the back. You're the best black female YouTuber that he's seen. Maddie Aww, said that you. Nicole is the best female YouTuber I've ever seen. All right, good. Thanks, sweetie. All right. So again, thank you so much. I will see you guys tonight uh, on the Brother Pill. Tonight on the Brother Pill, we're talking about bl why black people got to stop blaming white people for our problems. So it's a little bit of a different show than the typical show. So we're not talking about dating and relationship tonight. We're talking about uh, why black black people got to stop blaming white people for our problems. Ooh. That's going to be very yes it's gonna be very interesting I, I i i pretty i pretty much think that we're gonna get like about a thousand people watching on that show tonight for sure again thank you nicole you've been great thank see you tonight bye-bye bye what the fuck is going on with this shit oh here we go